a population full of history, an interesting millinery culture, and an invisible protection placed upon them in society and media. Situations like the Kyrie Irving situation makes it clear that there is a direct effort to protect this race of people. We hear about the Holocaust and all but what is really the grounds for all this protection? What is the deal with all this attention? Since the Middle Ages, way before the Holocaust was ever even close to being thought of, Jews have historically been persecuted and expunged from various parts and societies of the world. On July 18, 1290, all Jews were expelled from the Kingdom of England. In 1791, Russia under Catherine the Great instituted the Pale of Settlement, which restricted Jews to the western parts of the empire by deportation. In 1683, Jews were expelled from Haiti and all other French colonies. The expulsion of Jews came from societies not liking the idea of having a faction within their nations. For example, imagine you have a nation built around the laws of the USA Constitution. Now imagine you have a large group of society who has open conflicting values and ideologies of the USA and one day plan to create a larger nation of their own. This new faction state becomes a direct threat to the USA because it creates a black hole. The faction state will exploit and benefit from the USA people to their own nation's benefit. This was the problem many countries had with Jew societies. Jews' cravings for a Jew nation continued to grow up until the Zionist movement was created. Zionism is a movement that supports the establishment, maintenance, and support of a homeland for Jewish people, preferably in Palestine. From 1897 to 1948, the primary goal of the Zionist movement was to establish the basis for a Jewish homeland in Palestine and make it stronger by taking over the region. This movement had great figures who pushed it forward but none greater than Theodor Herzl. Known in Hebrew as Chozaham Adina, he is specifically mentioned in Israel's Declaration of Independence and is officially referred to as the spiritual father of the Jewish state. Herzl founded the Zionist organization and promoted Jewish immigration to Palestine in an effort to establish a Jewish state. Growing up, he was actually greatly fond of German culture and saw the Germans as the best educated people in Central Europe and embraced the German ideal of self-cultivation. He believed that through education, Hungarian Jews like himself could shed their shameful Jewish characteristics caused by long centuries of impoverishment and oppression and become civilized Central Europeans, just like the Germans. One day, as a correspondent for a French news channel, Herzl followed the Dreyfus case. The Dreyfus case is an infamous anti-Semitic incident in France in which a Jewish captain in the French army was falsely convicted of spying for Germany. Herzl himself stated that the Dreyfus case made him a Zionist and that he was particularly affected by the chance of death to the Jews from the crowds. Thus Herzl came to believe that antisemitism could not be defeated or cured, only prevented, and that the only way to avoid it was to establish a Jewish state. By this time, he had already begun to hear about the Zionist movement. Early 19th century people all over the world started to realize this Zionist movement and decided to combat. Other countries also began developing their own nationalist movements. One of these countries was Germany. A nationalist movement in Germany began to arise after the people of Germany felt exploited by factions that had developed in their country. Germany created an entire German state, decided that Jews were no longer welcome there, and instituted programs to rid their country of non-Germans. As nationalist movements spread throughout Europe and Asia, these expanding empires eventually collided, and World War II began. Post-World War II After World War II, there was an influx of Jewish refugees, and almost all of them had their sights on Palestine. But many of these refugees who came to Palestine caused great problems for the Palestinian people. You see, people and societies already inhabited the region, and many begin arguing that the Jews from the Zionist movement are not the same past inhabitants or natives from the area. Despite this, the Jews were determined to accomplish their goal. The Jews started many attacks, insurgents, and riots to take over Palestine. 
On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish Agency, declared the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel to be known as the State of Israel. The next day, the armies of four Arab countries, Egypt, Syria, Transjordan, and Iraq, invaded parts of the Palestine to combat this movement beginning the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The ostensible purpose of the invasion was to only prevent the establishment of the Jewish state at its inception, and some Arab leaders spoke of returning the Jews to where they came from. The UN estimated that more than 700,000 Palestinians were displaced or fled the advance of Israeli forces during the conflict, which would become known in Arabic as the Nakba or the Catastrophe. About 156,000 remained and became Arab citizens of United Nations by majority vote on May 11, 1949. Jews do not want to provoke skepticism about their movement, as their actions may not be seen as morally correct in the eyes of some. This begs the question, does mistreatment justify treating others similarly or worse? See you next time.